Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. In today's DIY video, Five Below Tumbling Tower Blocks DIY Big Jangle Block Wood Bowl, we are making a new larger version of last year's Unreal Jangle Block Wood Bowl. This time using tumbling tower blocks in the larger size from five below. This is an easy project that yields a gorgeous and very substantial piece of home decor. Simple, quick, and sure to impress. You don't want to miss out on this one. It's pretty cool, so stick around and let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. To begin with, I'm using 83 of these large size tumbling tower jingle blocks from Five Below. They come in boxes of 48 blocks, so I used almost two full boxes in total, although I did stain more than two boxes, just in case, because you know how I am. I wanted to use a coffee stain to color these blocks, so instead of my usual soaking the blocks in a bowl of instant coffee and water, since these blocks are so big, they take up so much space in a bowl, I decided the paint to paint that coffee onto the blocks, and I was still able to get a medium-toned, warm brown color that I wanted. I use about half the jar of instant coffee, and I buy the least expensive that you can find, mixed with an empty bottle of hot water, and I was ready to paint. I'm showing you here the size comparison between these large blocks and the regular Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks. These five below blocks are quite a bit bigger, as you can see here. Though these are not to be confused with those humongous jumbo wood blocks from Five Below, which frankly are big enough to build a house with, and I can't wait to get me some of those, but my Five Below didn't have them yet, of course. So using a foam brush from Dollar Tree, I paint the coffee onto about three boxes of these blocks, even though you only need two boxes. I start with painting the fronts of all the blocks together and I do end up doing two coats of coffee. And I recommend you definitely wear gloves because this coffee will stain your hands, even though it will smell lovely, still it will stain them. So wear gloves. And then I flip those blocks over and paint the other side the same way with two very generous coats of the coffee. Then I flip them over to the side and then to the other side later to cover those sides with the coffee too. Lastly, I paint both the top and the bottom edges with the coffee and then I let all of those blocks dry overnight. Now, if you have seen my video last year of the Unreal Jingle Block Bowl, I will link that video below for you in case you have not seen it, but if you have seen it, this will look familiar to you. I'm beginning my first row of blocks using five blocks, and they're on their sides, and I've assembled them to form a kind of half moon or a bowl shape, basically. I use more blocks as spacers in between each of those five blocks, and the spacers won't be in the design, we're not gluing them. They are simply there to try and keep the spaces between each of the blocks that are there even. So now I lay out that first row of five blocks. We will be using tight bond quick and thick wood glue for the entire project. I'll link it for you in the description box below. The second row has four blocks, which we are gluing over the spaces between each of our five blocks on that bottom row. And on this second row of four blocks, we glue them directly above the first row. We are not angling these or indenting. We are gluing them straight above the first row over the spaces between each of those blocks. On the third row, we are back to five blocks again, and because the blocks on the ends for this row don't have blocks beneath them, I do place little support blocks under each end so that when I glue those end blocks down, they have support helping to hold them up as they dry, and hopefully that makes sense to you. And again, this third row is glued straight up and over the row that is beneath it. For this fourth row, we are back to four blocks glued directly above that third row beneath it. 
for row number five, we are doing five blocks again. And again, we have no blocks on the end. So we need to place support blocks on each end to help hold up those end blocks in place when we glue them. The fifth row is the last row that we are gluing straight up and over the row beneath it. It's too hard to Starting on the sixth row, things get a little more interesting. Row six has four blocks on it, but this row is when we start to indent the rows inward and angle them toward what will be the inside of the bowl. We glue the blocks about halfway inside and onto that block that's beneath them, as you can see me do here. And what I did is I make stacks, tall stacks of blocks to support those angled rows as they are drying since they are not as steady when they're wet as the rows that were straight up and down and had a full block under them. These only have half a block, so we do need to support them. Now, still needing support as these rows get higher, so do the stacks of our support blocks so that each additional row has something under it to help hold it up as it dries. This is row number seven and it has five blocks. So not only do we need our tall stacks of support blocks, we also need those two support blocks on each end of the row to hold up those two end blocks. I know that sounds complicated, but I think you can see by watching the video that it's really not. Row number eight has four blocks and we are still angling all of our rows inward. So that means we also need to keep building up our stacks of support blocks to help support that row underneath it. Row number nine has three blocks still angling inwards with our stack of support blocks to support them as they dry. Row number 10 has four blocks and you know the drill, they're glued on an angle toward the inside of the bowl. Row number 11 is back to three blocks and they're also glued on an inward angle. Row number 12 only has two blocks. Row number 13 is back to three blocks and we will need support blocks under the two ends of the row in order to support those end blocks. Row number 14 is the final row for this first side of our tumbling tower block bowl, and it has two blocks. These are also angled inward like the rest of those rows. At this point, I let the entire side of this bowl fully dry overnight before continuing. So it's the next day and this side of my bowl is dry. So we begin to build the second side of the bowl. We are starting in the middle of the bowl where we have those five rows that are flat and not angled. And this first row on the second side that we're gonna do is the sixth row. And the sixth row is where this side of the bowl begins to be angled, just like we did on the other side. And hopefully that makes sense to you. It's really just a carbon copy of the other side of the bowl that we just did. So I am gonna kinda zip through these rows because you already saw me do them the first time. All the rows have the same number of blocks as the other side of the bowl did. So you can always pause the video and just jot down how many blocks are in each row from the captions that I'm putting at the top of the screen for you. And this is how our five below big tumbling tower block wood bowl turned out. Now I did place a couple of blocks under the bottom of the bowl to give it a little height, but I didn't glue them to the bowl. You can always use additional blocks as feet if you wanna add some height to your bowl. That's always an option. 
You guys, this is a big bowl. It's like table centerpiece size. It's massive and I love it. I love it every bit as much as my original Dollar Tree Jango Block wood bowl from last year. It's just, it's so modern and it's so clean looking. I'm showing you the difference in size between the Five Below blocks and the Dollar Tree blocks just for reference. Five Below has mini blocks and these larger blocks and some huge blocks that I have not been able to get my hands on yet, but I am dying to. This DIY is so easy and so simple to do and minus the drying time, it's pretty fast too. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments if you love this big, big bowl as much as I do, or if the Dollar Tree Jingle Block Wood Bowl from last year is your favorite. I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY, and if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps out my channel. Once again, I really appreciate you watching, and a really big thank you to my subscribers. I am so glad you're here. Until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife, and crafting is my medication.